Despite the significant changes that we've seen in our climate over the last few decades, it wasn't until recently that the majority of scientists believe that global warming might be the cause. If you talked to me five years ago, I would have been kind of a fence-sitter on this whole idea of greenhouse gases involved in climate change. We'd been looking at the natural cycles for some years, and I was convinced they were the dominant force. And so it's taken us about, well, about a decade to really put the numbers together. Skeptics will say we've been through this in the long course of history before. We've had spikes and drops in temperature. Why is this different? What's different now is that we now understand quite well what caused these changes of the climate. Scientists understand those changes in large part because of these. Massive supercomputers crunching away at billions of climate equations. Climate models essentially have come out of weather forecasting models. Um, they run for much longer periods. They run for hundreds of years rather than days. Professor Peter Cox heads one of the most comprehensive climate modeling efforts in the world, the Hadley Center for Climate Research in Exeter, England. These models break down the Earth and its atmosphere into grids, taking into account all the variables that influence climate. They contain clouds, they contain rainfall patterns, they contain winds, um, and climate models also have to contain slower components like how the vegetation and the soil respond to change and how the oceans change. If you have any remaining doubts that human activity is behind rising carbon dioxide levels and rising temperatures, take a look at the results of this Hadley Center model. The red line tracks the actual temperature rise over the last 150 years. The green line, Earth's natural climate cycles. Watch how it begins to deviate from temperature. The yellow line, on the 